Claws your eyes and pull like a dog. <laughs> and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland Champions for the seventh time ever. Hello and welcome to the Star Sport Podcast. My name is Jack McCarran of the Southern Star and I'm joined as always by Star Sport Editor Kieran McCarthy. Before we kick things off, I'd just like to give a gentle reminder to our listeners and viewers to please rate, review and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and YouTube. It's semi-final weekend in the County Premier Senior Football Championship and with huge West Cork interest in both semi-finals, they'll be the focus of this week's show. On Sunday, as part of a doubleheader at Park Aquive, Clonakilty take on Douglas at 1pm before last year's beaten finalists Castlehaven take on the fancied bars at 3pm. In a few moments, we're going to be joined by star columnist and ex-Cork footballer Michal Hawley O'Sullivan to preview both games. But first, Kieran, let's quickly cover off some of the other big stories from the past week. And I suppose the best place to start from a West Cork perspective is with Cora winning their first Carberry Junior A title in eight years when they beat St Mary's 2-10 to 1-8 in front of a massive crowd in Dunmanway last Thursday evening. The Cora men didn't have much time to rest or celebrate, however, because after that win, they went on to lose in the county series just a few days later against Ballin Hasig. The highs and lows came quick for the Cora men. Yeah, Thursday night lights in Dunmenway last Thursday. Like you said there, Jack, uh, Tiger McCorrig crowned uh, the kingpins of West Cork Junior football for the first time in nine years. And it was their, their, their seventh time winning this title. And nobody could say that they haven't deserved it this year. They've um, for very deserving winners. They beat Mary's 2-10 to 1-8 in the final. And they got off to a quick fire start. They 2-2 scored inside the open eight minutes. So that gave them a huge platform to go on and build. They got goals from Sean McCarthy and Paddy Burke. So that well, that put Cora in the driving seat. It meant St. Mary's had huge work to do just to get a foothold in the game, not to mind try and come back. Um, it's a credit to Mary's that they did manage to come within five points at the end. But this this was Cora's night. It was all about Tyke McCorrig. Um, Captain Brian O'Driscoll led by example. Colin O'Driscoll, his older brother, got men of the match. The third O'Driscoll brother, Ke- um, Kevin, was a classis in midfield and played really, really well. Ono Donovan is another fella who who, who, um, who caught the eye. So um, Tyke McCorrig, very deserving West Cork Junior A champions this year. Back on top of the tree in Carberry, but did such a short turnaround before they're out in the county last Sunday um, in Bandon against Belling Hassig. And it, it, it's it, it's unfair in so many ways that they couldn't even celebrate their, their first Carberry win in nine years because that was a Thursday night. It was Friday, Saturday, and then a game on Sunday. It's all to do, to do with the county deadlines because the Carberry champions had to be out in, um, in county action last Sunday. But because of the, the split season and the, the, I suppose there's only... A, a finite amount of dates that there wasn't a bigger gap for the for for Tyg McCorrig to prepare for a county quarter final because this is a very good Tyg McCorrig team and it, you feel if they got a week or so just a break between the games that re- they really could have given the county the county a good rattle and at the second water break last Sunday against Van Hassig Tyg McCorrig were up six points. But then their second game in, in less than four days, it just caught up with them. They, um, Tom Lyons, our reporter there, said they just they look exhausted. They collapsed and Ben Hassett came back. They got the draw and they went on and they kicked out an extra time to win. So highs and lows within within a couple of days of each other. But I think for, for Tiger McCorrig to be back on top in Carberry, to be the number one team again, um, that'll definitely shorten the winter for them. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, talent. Within that core team and the fact that's taken him nine years to actually win the title again just shows how tough a competition this is to win. Exactly. When you're thinking of the trio Driscoll brothers, at one stage, Kevin Cullum and Brian were all on the Cork senior football team at the same time. And Kevin O was a sole representative from the O'Driscolls. But that is three 
Cork footballers playing junior A football in Carberry, and you think, oh God, like with, with fellas of that caliber that they'll um, that they'll win Carberry year after year after year. But the Carberry Junior A football championship is so competitive over the last couple of years. Like Kilbacky B have been the the top team for the for the past couple of seasons. Before that, St. James has won a terrific um junior A a couple of years back. You've had St. Columns, you've had St. Mary's. It's a real competitive championship. So the fact that Cora have had to wait since 2012 to win it again, it just highlights how competitive it is. Um, and already looking towards the 2022 championship, it's going to be so ultra competitive again because you have so many good teams and so little between them um, that it just makes for a good championship. And also the fact that if you look at uh, at um, Ivlera, who were the, the 2020 county junior A champion, champions, they come out of Musgrave. They've gone up into the in, into the county intermediate and they're blitzing a trail there. They're in the county semi-final this weekend. So it shows to the likes of Tiger McCaw and Kil- Kilmackey Bay. If we get out of Carberry, we, we're not too far away in the county. And if we get the county final and win that, we could shoot up the ranks as well. So there's a huge prize on offer for the winners of the Carberry because they get into the county series. And a Carberry winner then has a good chance of going far, like we saw for a couple of years ago. Kilmackenby were in a were in a county final and so on. So um, just shows that there's a there's a good standard here in, in junior A football in Carberry. Lovely stuff, Kieran. And as we said, just a shame that Cora didn't have enough time to recover for that clash with Valen Hassett. Well, there's lots more to get to on today's podcast, and in part two, we're going to be looking ahead to crucial games involving Island Rovers, Dohanese ladies and men's sides, Castlehaven ladies, Randalls, Goline, and much more. But first, we're going to focus on the aforementioned doubleheader at Park Aquive on Sunday. And in a moment or two, we're going to be joined by Michal Hawley O'Sullivan. But Kieran, I'll come to you first. 2009 was the last time Clonakilty won a senior county title. They played Douglas on Sunday. How do you see this game going from a Clonakilty perspective? When you look at the Clonakilty team even the last couple of years, like they're they're a team full of talented players, but they, they could just never get it together for whatever reason. And this year they've started the gel and they're a, a team that's very much a work in progress. I think they've done very well to get to the county semi-final. Um to get out of the group was their was their first target. They achieved that. Then they beat Duhello in the quarter final by kicking the last seven points in a row. So that was almost an, another psychological barrier that Clannacilty broke. And now they're true to a, a county semi-final. So I know obviously Clan want to win and want to get the county final. But regardless of what happens on Sunday, this Clan team has already made big progress. And that's something that they can build on next year and the year after and the year after because they've proved they're good enough to get out of the group stage. They're good enough to win a quarter final. They're good enough to get the semi final. The question now is are they good enough to win a county semi final against a team like Douglas? And the, probably the answer is they are. They are because if you're looking at the at their journey so far, like they, they beat a good melancholic team and they beat a season to hello team. So that's put them into the last four against a Douglas team that was the top. Um, the top team from the group stages and got a bye direct into the semi-finals. So while Clan, you think, have had the advantage of playing that game against against Duhello, um recently, Douglas have been able just just to watch on, maybe just kind of, um, if they didn't need niggas in the camp, get, get all in right, so they'll be fully fighting fit for, for Sunday. But Clan are going into this game on a high, and they have such talent in their ranks. Um, Look at the names straight away. You've Sean White, Mark White, Thomas Clancy, Morris Shanley, Liam O'Donovan. You've Dar O'Shea, Joe Grimes, David Lowney. That's just seven or eight fellas off the top of my head. And that's the that's the, the core of a very, very good team. Um, like I said, they've done very well to get here. But the one reservation I would have about Clan so far, and I think it's something that they, they need to solve, is their dependence on Dar O'Shea for scores. I was working out there. Dar O'Shea scored 219 in this year's um, Senior Football Championship for Clan. Next up is Sean McAvoy and Ross Mannix with one three apiece. Like, that's a huge disparity from 219 down, down to one three. And I just worry, do Clan have enough scores in attack to, to, to win a county semi-final and to go on to win a county final? They left the shackles off against Duhello in the in the semi-final when they were six points down. They were lost seven points in a row and they got over the line. Um, they need... They need more more players to step up and help Dar O'Shea because what if Dar O'Shea has an off day, if he's a quiet day? What if Douglas Holtham have Clang got enough scorers 
there to get over the line. Um, I think that's a question that will be answered on 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 um, on Sunday. But they've done extremely well to get here. And I, even though Douglas will be favourites, I give Clan every chance here. Well, the other semi final sees last year's beaten county finalists, county finalists Castle Haven, going up against the team that's on everyone's lips as the team to beat this year, and that is the Bars. So, Kieran, what's the likelihood we see Castle Haven back in a county final? Never right off the Haven, even though the Bars are going into this game as as favourites, and rightly so. Like they have a terrific team led by E. McGuire, they've Stephen Sherlock on fire up front. Um, Castle Haven or Castle Haven, you just cannot write them off. And if you go back to to last year's County Premier Senior Football Championship, these two teams met at the same stage, and it went all the way to sudden death in the penalty shootout after extra time, after normal time. There was no separating these teams, but Mark Collins was a hero that day. He got the sudden death penalty that sent Haven through to the county final. You just can't write off the Haven. They have so much experience and quality players in their ranks. Um, Brian Hurley is, is doing what Brian Hurley does. He's got 220 so far in this championship. Michael Hurley scored 1-7. Um, and the one thing about Castle Haven, they have so many players chipping in with scores. Whereas I mentioned Clannock Kilty earlier, there's such a dependency on Dar Roche. With, with Castle Haven, they have a fierce spread of scorers. Brian Hurley, Michael Hurley, Cahill Maguire, Mark Collins has won five. Connor Driscoll has eight points. Jack Cahillan has stepped up with four points. And he's a, he's a young fellow now who started the last four championship games for, for Castle Haven. So they have that experience. They have the players. And probably what, what's so important here too is the likes of Mark Collins are finding form at the right time of the year. Um, Mark... Mark was whether he's struggling with injury or what, he just wasn't firing early on in the year. But he's coming up in clutch moments now in the last couple of weeks for Castlehaven. He got the winning point against Carby Rangers in the group stage. He got the crucial goal against Valleys in, in the quarter final. Um, he's a man for the big occasion. So too are Brian and Michael Hurley. So Haven have the players, they have the experience, they have the sideline smarts in James McCarthy. He knows all about semi-finals and, and how to how to win them. Um St. Finn Bars will be favourites. But again, you cannot write off Castlehaven because they showed against Valleys the last day out that they're they're playing good football. But but there's more to come from them as well. And Parky Cueve is a big, huge pitch. And I think that could suit them on Sunday. So when you're looking at the two semi-finals, Douglas are slight favourites against Clan and Bars are favourites against Castlehaven. But like here in the star, we're dreaming of a of a, of a Clan Haven final. That's kind of I've I've been lighting candles for the last week and a half that that happens. Um you just can't write off the two West Cork teams. If they could shock the, the, the two the, the two city boys, it could be there for the, for the country lads on Sunday up in Parky Cueve. Well, it's a mouth-watering prospect and we'll, of course, have full coverage from both games across southernstar.ie and in next week's Southern Star is also going to be big previews in this week's sports section as well. But for now, Kieran, let's get the thoughts of a man who knows... The West Cork club scene more than most. He's a star columnist. He's an ex Cork footballer. It's me, Hall, Holly O'Sullivan. On the podcast now, we're joined by uh, me, Hall O'Sullivan, to have a, a chat about the two Premier Senior Football Championship semi finals this Sunday. It's a big doubleheader in Parky Cueve um, with Clannock Hilty and Douglas at 1 30, and then it's the Bars and Castlehaven at 3 30. Uh, Holly, when, when it comes to county semi-finals and you've been here before as, as, a, as a player and a manager is, is it all about the result and getting to the final and how important is the performance in a semi-final in the grand scheme of things well I suppose g- generally you don't get a result without a performance but like you said it's all about getting to the final you know, nobody will remember whether you had a poor performance or a great performance in the semi-final you know, it's all about getting to the final and give yourself a chance of winning the county so with that in mind, let's have a look at Clannock Kilty first. Like I said, they're, they're playing Douglas. It's the, the first semi-final up on Sunday. In some ways, Clannock are probably the surprise packets of the last four because in recent years, they had struggled at, at, at senior grade and even go back to last year, they didn't get out of the group stage. But now this year with, with, with Harley O'Neill um, back as manager, they've made definite strides forward. They're, they're winning games that maybe they would have lost before. So... Are you surprised to see Clan in the semi final? Have you been, been impressed by what you've seen in them so far? Um, I'm I'm not surprised. I'd I'd have, I'd have felt openly that they were underachieving for the last number of years. Um, knowing a lot of their players from uh, from school football, you know they have 
they have a very talented group of players. And I think what what Holly O'Neill and, and Neil DC have, have bought this year is they've bought a, a discipline and, and a respect to the squad, um, which you know may, may have may have been needed. Um they brought a new steel to the squad, and I, I think that they've been lucky enough as well to get two very good players or three I suppose in, in Ridgeway and Grimes and Darrow Shea from outside you know anytime that you can bring in players or have players come into your community that can fill central positions on your football team you now makes a, an, an absolutely huge difference as it did to us you know back the years there when, when Robbie Kiley came to us for four or five years you know you're, 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 you're putting in you know you, you know as it's, as it's turned out Grimes and O'Shea are probably you know in clans top five players at the moment, and you know you're putting in two very good players, and and maybe taking out two at the other end, so your team is bound to improve from that point of view. Um, you know Holly and and Neil, and Neil Deasy, Holly in particular, you know, he brings he brings a ferocious steel and a ferocious intensity to anything he gets involved in. And you know the the clan players do have huge respect for him because his track record is is there to be seen for, for everybody. Um, you know like they 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 do they do have a fantastic uh, chance in this semi final because. But both teams here are breaking new ground and they're relatively inexperienced at, at, at semi final at the semi final stage. You mentioned there Holly O'Neill, and obviously he's been involved in previous clan success. Go back to 2009, even back to '96. Um, he's a he's a man you know as well. Uh, what does Holly O'Neill bring to a team? Like how has he and his management team, like you, like you said there, um, DC Owen Ryan and so on? How have they started to get the best out of this collection of, of good players? Well, the, the one thing Holly is is he's he's a, a ferocious analyzer and student of the game. Um, I think Neil DC probably does a, a lot of the actual practical football training, but the the analysis and the setup and the, the way the team plays would be predominantly Holly's um, Holly's ideas coming through. I would think anyway. Um, from my experience of working with him at school level, you know, even with young lads that were seventeen or eighteen and maybe nineteen and didn't really know him at all. He brings, you know, an instant respect. He is a, a, a great way of, of, of carrying himself and a great way of talking to people. He's a very good communicator. And, you know, he, he has those ferociously intense eyes that, you know, they, they, they definitely used to frighten the life out of the young kids at school and they had no choice and he listened to him. So, look, that, that, that respect is there and he brings an awful lot to it and Tanner him with great chance. Like, like you said there, you mentioned the likes of Dar Roche and Joe Grimes, and they've both been huge additions to, to Clan. But even looking for the further back the field, um, Thomas Clancy has been playing quite well this year. They get Emo Donovan and Morris Shanley both back from injury too. I know they're probably still a bit rusty and they're still finding their feet, but they're two huge additions. And then you you Sean White and Mark White, two fellas with, with senior intercounty experience. So even from that alone, that's seven or eight really good players. And that's the that's the core of a very, very good team there. Definitely, and like their their backline is definitely loaded. The only guy that has more than red jersey is on DC at centre back. Um, you know, you include Tom Pete there, who was our then Pete. It was Car- his brother's Tom. Then Pete at cornerback. You know, he's he's another guy that was on the under seventeen, the under twenties there for a couple of years. Um, as the time goes on, and I've said it already, <laughs> right in my column, you know, they'll they'll come up against a, a, a better caliber of opposition now in the next day. I don't know, can they afford to keep all those players back there? Um, you know, particularly uh, Tom Clancy, uh, the last day against um last day against Duhello. You now Grimes had a good game around the middle. Ridgeway struggled for long periods. They're going to be coming up a better partnership now again against the two Harpers against Douglas. You know, maybe not from the start, but it could happen at some stage that Clancy finds himself at midfield because they do have enough cover behind. In, in Shenley and, and Liam Donovan and Sean White, you know, those calibre of players are well, well capable of filling those positions and releasing one more for the forward because I think they need that. I've spoken to Owen Ryan for, for, for this, this tour as a Southern Star and Owen is of the opinion that they're, that obviously with this clan management team, it's their first year with this group and they're building towards something and he said there's a lot more to come from this group, but do you think they can deliver on Sunday? Do you think they can beat Douglas and, and get into a county final? Well, I think, you know, they, they, they need to speed up their play going forward. You know, the, the likes of Lyndon and Sean White, well, very good players that they are, but they take an awful lot out of the ball when they're on it. You know, they sold the ball an awful lot. And uh, we, we saw that for long periods against Duhalo the last day. You know, the, 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 the fast service just wasn't there for the likes of Darrow Shea and Young Daly and Mannix, McAvoy and Loney. You know, they're, they're not contributing enough on the scoreboard, but there's two sides to that story. They're not getting the ball quick enough either. And I think if they can get that ball in there quicker, those boys have pace. They are contributing 
they are capable of contributing one or two points each, which is what would be needed on top of what O'Shea is going to score from freeze and maybe two or three can play. So I think I think they just need to get that ball in there quicker if they can. Is that as simple as just letting the shackles off a small? Because you actually mentioned there about about Daryl O'Shea, and I was going through the stats, Holly, right? Daryl O'Shea has got 219 in the championship so far, but then you're dropping down to the Sean McAvoy and Ross Mannix, who've got one three a piece each, then Sean White one two, Joe Grimes at three points, Jack Mahoney, Connor Daly, two points each. Like there from, from, from Daryl O'Shea down to the next in their scoring list, like there's a huge gap there. So is it as simple of like what do you think they need to do to get those extra points? Is it just get the shackles off and just push forward a bit more? Um, like with 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 Gar O'Shea, we even saw last day. Like while Joe Hallow had energy in the tank for forty five minutes, Gar O'Shea was held. Mm-hmm. But once the spaces started to develop, when Joe Hallow started to tire, he started making headway and started contributing more in the game. But if they are going to get those those other forwards into the game, they just they, they need to. They are pacey players. Some of the man besides the, the biggest of players like uh, Mannix and McAvoy, but they're very, very quick and they're good to finish if they do get the, the opportunity, but they need quicker ball in space in one-on-one situations and they're just not getting that at the moment because it's taking Clan too long to get the ball up the pitch. Last question, so on Clan. Um, what's your thoughts on Mark White as a sweeper keeper? It's a, it's a new fed in the GA. We've seen it now with different goalkeepers and he, he, he made, a, made an impression in fairness against Tuhello, like he was driving up the field. Um, what are your thoughts on, on a goalkeeper playing that role? Well, look, Mark White is an excellent footballer. He, he'd have played midfield for us at school level. Um, he actually marked, um, was 2015, I think we played uh, Corky Green and he was marking Mark O'Connor, you know, the Kerry guy that's gone to Australia, playing Australian rules and did, did an excellent job on him the same day. So, like, he does he does have the ball skills, you know, I suppose. In an ideal world, if Clan had had a replacement, they could possibly afford to play him outfield. But look, he, he does contribute, but I think he needs to be a little bit careful sometimes because he starts to make his move while the play is developing sometimes and gets ahead of the play. And, you know, there is going to be that one occasion in a big game where you, it, it, you just might get caught and it could cost you the game. So I think he needs to pick his moments carefully and I think he is experienced enough to do that. And he is making a contribution. It's different, you know, and he is capable of it. So, you know, as 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 long as he's picking it at the right times, I think it's, the, it's, it's a good thing to be doing for him. So that's that's Clan and Douglas. So that's one thirty on Sunday that throws in, and that's followed in by a by a heavyweight clash. It's it's Castlehaven against the Bars, and it was the same semi final pairing last year, and that went all the way to sudden death after a penalty shootout after extra time because there was no sub- separating these two. Can you envisage uh, a, a close game again on Sunday? I definitely can. This is a a, a difficult one to call again, and I probably would have fancied the Bars more only for the fact that the two hurlers are in such good form. You know, as a pair, they're probably the most dangerous pair that any one team has um, that, that's left in the competition. Um, I'd, you know, have, having seen Castlehaven playing Aerog, I still have question marks about Castlehaven back then that they're there to be exposed. They weren't exposed by Valleys because Valleys just didn't have those quality forwards that are capable of doing it like Aerog have. Um, I think Castlehaven need to get a little bit more out of, um, out of Damien Callan and Conor Callan. No, I don't think they've been playing to the level that James Mack or Clary would expect him to be playing at. And all those fellas need to fire. I'm 100% if they're going to beat the Bears because the Bears are one series out. You mentioned there, obviously, Brian and Michael Hurley. Brian is 220 so far. Michael Hurley is 17. Carl Maguire is 15. Mark Collins is 15. Connor just is eight points. Um, Jack Helen is four points. Like they, they have so many scoring options, um, Castlehaven. So if it comes a, sh- a shootout, you'd almost back them. Because defensively, they wouldn't be as strong. Like they're, I think they're a team that plays better on the front foot. Yeah, like they're they're they're, they're probably the opposite. The clan, mm-hmm. if you could if you could amalgamate the two teams, you know, they Castlehaven know of like you said, you mentioned <clears throat> Jack Callan and and Cahill Maguire. You know, they're they're better than what they used to have mm-hmm. that used to play with the with, with the two early. So they, they do have five or six scoring powers, but it all depends on what's going to happen around the middle. You know, can Mark Collins and uh, and Jamie Welsh battle it out with the size that Maguire and Commons and Dennis O'Brien bring around there? And can they get enough balls out of the heaven? You know, we, we, we'll have enough ball to do damage with, with the two hurlers in such good form. But then the Bears do have excellent backs. You know, they have backs that are used to coming up against the hurlers. You know, like the Sam Ryan and on Dennehy and Glen O'Connor and, and um, what's his name? 
Uh, I can't think they call him Hoax. I can't give his proper name. <laughs> but, you know, they, 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 they are well capable of matching up there as well. So, look, I, I think it could, could come down to a, a battle around the middle if if Aeroog showed how to get around um, the bar size at, at, at midfield. You know, they, they went short enough and ended up winning 70% of the wrong kick which, which is a great start. Mm-hmm. You know, the bars have a lot of options. You know, they, their keeper tended to go long an awful lot at the time. Um, on the other hand, then, you know, the bars are capable of putting serious pressure on Seymour's kick out. And when when Valley's pressure on Seymour's kick out, he didn't, you know, I, I think he's there to be got at if 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 uh, if if the pressure comes on and the bars can start to really push up. Castellan would really have to negate the influence of Ian Maguire on Sunday. Like he's he's the best midfielder in the county. He's been he's been in great form. Like uh, how do you kind of curb the influence or the trace of, of a player like that? Well, for us, it was always curbing his running game because his running game is the strongest part of his game. I was feeling has improved on his foot path. He has improved the last couple of years, but he's a very, very powerful runner and the timing of his runs is very good. So, you know, our attitude always was try to hammer the hammer, try and match him with power and pace and try and run with him and, you know, <clears throat> negate his running game if you possibly could. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're, you're making a good start if you can do that. If you have a person that is willing to sacrifice their own game just to follow him around all day and try and match him physically and don't let him win clean ball. So, you know, there is no doubt Castlehaven will have an awful lot of thought put into that and they'll be, you know, they're used to playing the bars, both of these teams are used to facing each other, so that adds an extra edge to it as well. Like, when you're looking at this Castlehaven 2 team as well, obviously Brian Hurley and, and Michael Hurley, and we mentioned them already, but the threat that they bring, and I know it's been the same two names now for the last five, six, seven, eight, nine years, but the Hurley brothers, but they do deliver time after time. And if you look at, like Brian has said, he's got 220 so far and he's been top scorer in, in nearly all their games. Like he's still producing for the club and he's still still one of the top forwards in the county. So as much as Haven will try and negate, um, try and negate the likes of Sherlock and E. Maguire, the Bears will be just as worried, I presume, about Brian Hurley. Well, there's no doubt. Like, in, um, you know, I'd, I'd say Brian Hurley would say himself, he's back enjoying his football. You know, like he's he's been through a hard time there over the last two or three years and has still been producing reasonably well for Castlehaven, but nothing like he was. Um, he doesn't seem to be back to the farm that he was in, let's say, six, seven years ago before he had the, the bad injuries. Um, and Michael is a different kind of a player. Michael kind of could go missing for five or six minutes and then if he gets the right ball in the right place at the right time, he has this five or six yard burst that tends to take him around players and create space for himself. And he is a very good shooter if he does do that. Um one guy as well that has improved with every single game and Mark Collins had a quite under county uh, year but every championship game that Castlehaven have played he's become more and more influential um, he was extremely influential the last day against um, Valleys you know he got the goal to separate the teams before half time he got two very good points as well so I think he's you know there was talk that he was carrying an injury all year and that he was not 100% but he does look like he's uh, he's coming back to full fitness again and he is extremely important for, for, for Castlehaven as well so two huge games on Sunday. I'm going to ask you to put your, your reputation on the line, Holly. If I'd ask you to, to pick the finalist, who's going to come out of these two games? First, Clan and Douglas. Well, like I'm, I'm in a bit of a conundrum over Douglas because I don't know about Ray Keaton is going to do with regard to his hurdles and the Cadigans and, and Shane Kingston and these guys because, I, like I said it already this week, my colleague might like, it, it could go one way or the other if they bring them back in. You know, they could be the making of the team or they could be, you could upset the whole atmosphere of the squad that have reached a semi-final. I do think Douglas could have done with an extra game like Clanhead because they are not used to being at this stage of the championship and they're a developing team. So, look, I'd, I'd, I'd put my head on the line and tip Clan against uh, against Douglas if they if they can get bought in quicker and score enough. Um, and the other one, I think the Barrett's will have too much for Castlehaven, to be honest, on this occasion. And, and why is that? You just think that the Bears are further along in their development as a team at this well, stage? Well, I, so? I think they have the backs to, to mark the whole league. I think they'll, they, they'll have, they, they will win the, the, they will edge the midfield battle. And they have Sherlock, who's in the farm of his life. They have this new guy, McCricker, who's come down from Down, that has, I think it's Down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he's made a big contribution to them this year. Myers Murray didn't play the last day. I know they've lost Brian Hayes, but Commons will probably go into midfield and Myers Murray probably, or McGree will come back into the forward line. But, you know, their, their last quarter of an hour, the last day, 
um, against Airog was the best football any club side had played this year. You know, their power, their pace, their the way they were linking up it was all one touch football. There was no one carrying the ball, you know, and they're finishing like I know Sherlock is uh, is is their main forward and he's tall shoot hand side, but they, they they do have a balance to their forward line as well when you look at it. So, you know, my 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 my, my heart is definitely say I, I think the Bears will will get over the hit and this okay. As you said, two big games. It'll be superb to see Clon. They're 25 years after they won in 96 and the, their, their 96 team will be up in the, the, the county final day in a couple of weeks' time. So it'll be super to, to see Clon up there as well. But uh, cheers for joining us, Holly. Um, hope, like I said, I hope we have two good games on Sunday. Very good. Thanks, Kira. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast. Number one for sport in West Cork. Outside of the Cork Premier Senior Football Championship, there's West Cork interest across all grades codes and divisions this weekend kieran i'm just going to quickly run through some of the fixtures and then you maybe pick out some of the big storylines that listeners should be looking out for this weekend there is of course the premier senior football championship relegation playoff between island rovers and carrigaline that one is in ross carberry on saturday Elsewhere, Donnies are in Senior A semi-final action against St. Michael's. That one is also in Park Equive on Saturday evening at 5pm. Kilimatra take on Newmarket in the Premier Intermediate Football Championship. Where else do we have some West Cork interest? There is Valley Rovers and Corsi Rovers in the Premier Intermediate Hurling Championship. Goline against Randalog, a big one in the Junior B Football Championship final. Then there's the massive West Cork Derby on Saturday between Doheny's Ladies and Castle Haven's Ladies in the Junior A final. That one's at 12 p.m. in MTU, formerly known as CIT. So if you're a West Cork GAA fan looking to get a game or two in, this is the weekend for you. So, Kieran, there's some massive games from the great and good of West Cork football and hurling. What ones stand out for you? I'm going to go straight to Rendell's and Goline in the Junior B football final in, in Parky Ring on Saturday, three o'clock. This is great. It's an odd West Cork county final. And Rendell's and Goline, they've played each other twice already this season. They have one win apiece, but Rendell's won the recent Carby Junior B football final. So maybe that gives them a slight advantage going in against, against Goline. A pet peeve I've had with this, why are they taking two West Cork teams up to Parky Ring? Why could they not have it somewhere in West Cork? In just be, just, like just that? hold that thought for a second. I, I, I get your point, but I just want to float this one out there um, before you finish it. Say for the likes of a Randall Logue or a Goalie in small clubs who don't really get the big days out all that often outside of Carberry. For those players, like I'm thinking about the level that I've played at throughout my career. It's generally been Junior B. And if you get a chance to play in your Parky Rins or unfortunately not Parky Queen for these heads, but Parky Rin, that's possibly a once in a career opportunity. So I just want to float that out there. But I totally see your point. Clonakilty would obviously be the perfect destination for supporters of both clubs. But I just want to play devil's advocate. 100% and I, I totally get that point as well and the players I'd say are looking forward they're counting on the hours on Saturday at 3 o'clock and I suppose I'm looking at it from, from a fan's perspective if you go back to the Carby final last week especially for the Goline uh, fans oh, Jesus yeah like the Carby final on a Thursday night in Dunmanway they had a huge crowd there because Fans just turned out, kind of even fans who weren't kind of Marys and, and Cara fans were there just to watch it. They did a huge crowd there and even the Carby J board streamed the final. I think they had over 700 watching it at, at some point so it showed the interest in that was a Carby Junior A football final. But for but for Rendell's and Goalie, like it's going to be a huge occasion. Like whatever happens on Saturday, a county title is coming back to, to West Cork, whether that's Randalls, who are probably the slight favourites, or, or Goline, who knows, but hopefully it'll be a cracking game. And I threw up a tweet there earlier, Jack, about, uh, about John Cullinan. He is that Goline warrior, 50 years of age he turned in July, and he's still going strong. It's a great story. He's been he's been a stalwart of that, of that team and that club for so many years. Um, Goline retweeted my tweet, and they said, hashtag legend, and you couldn't argue with that. Like, uh, John's, a, John's a great character, and he's given a huge, huge service to, to Goline um, like you said so to see them the Goline and the Randall footballers in Parky Ring big game that's one of the standout ones 
as well as the Dawny footballers on, on Saturday evening in their senior A football championship semi-final against St. Michael's. Michael's was that, that one is favourites, but you can't rule Dawny's out. They had a great win against Octobre in, in the last round. Um, Mark Buckley then got 1-5 that day. They're, for the first time in years, Dawny's have put three wins together in the championship back to back to back, which is brilliant to see. And that's and that's the beauty of these new championships that are now in their second year. For years, Donnie's were up in the, the old senior football championship, but they were winning a game and they were losing. They could have been stuck in a relegation scrap, but they were never, to be quite honest, they were never going, they were never going anywhere up there. With the senior A football championship, they're in a competition in a championship where they can more than hold their own. And we've seen it this year. Um, they've beaten Bendon, they've beaten Scave, they've beaten Knock McGree. They're now in, in, in a county semi-final. They're now dreaming of getting back to the first county final. Jesus, I don't know what, in, in, in 10 or 12 years. Um, so it's a huge day for, for the Dawnies up, up in um, up in Parky Cueve on, on, on Saturday. And there'll be a huge exodus from Dunmanway. But the Dunmanway um, faithful, they'd have left earlier that day because the Dawnies ladies are taking on the Castlehaven ladies in another all-West Cork um, final at 12 o'clock in, um, in MTU on, on Saturday. And this is this is a brilliant one again. The Castlehaven ladies are going for their third county title in a row. They won't C, they won't B. Now they could win A. Like they have huge momentum behind them. And um, they're captained by Siobhan Courtney, who's been part of the, the West Cork ladies team. And Castlehaven will go into this game as favourites. They beat Donnie's when the two teams met in the championship a couple of weeks back. Both teams were, were, were missing were missing players, but Haven will still start as favourites against the Donnie's team that does have Melissa Duggan. And if you have Melissa Duggan in your team, anything is possible. And Melissa has a busy day on Saturday, Jack. 12 o'clock, she has her county final. Then later that night, up in Dublin, it's the ladies' all-stars. So I'm presuming that Melissa will make a dash up the M50 after after the game on, on Saturday. She'll be hoping that she's a county title in her in her grasp, but we have to wait and see how... She might She might even have time to catch the first half of the Dottonese Michaels game since she could have a really action-packed field day. She's actually that fast she could. Like <laughs> anyone who's ever seen Melissa Duggan play, like she's a she's a, a right speedster on the pitch. So I wouldn't put that past her either. But like you said, there's so many good games um on, on Saturday. And such- talk to me, just um quickly talk to me about the Island Rovers game because Island Rovers were at this stage last year as well in the relegation playoff. They managed to avoid it on that occasion. They had they have had a tough, tough year. Would they deem like do they desperately want to stay in this uh in this division? Obviously, every team wants to stay in the Premier Senior Football Championship. But is there an argument to say that they could potentially benefit from going down? I know no one in either Rovers will want to say that or want to hear me saying that. But where where is the benefit of this repeated uh relegation situation? They've, in fairness to Ireland, they've shown progress this year. I was at their, their kind of kilter game in Ross Garby. That was their first game in the group stage. And and they held their own against Clan. It was just Clan got the goals that day and that made a difference. And then Ireland took on the Bears in their next day. And Ireland gave the Bears a huge fright. Um, they really pushed the Bears all the way. And that's a Bears team that are favourites for the county title. So I think Ireland have put in huge work this year, huge effort. Um, they didn't get the results to, to show that, but they were in a, a tough group again. I think Ireland are good enough to stay in the Premier Senior Football Championship. I think they'd be too good for Carrigaline. I think um, Carrigaline have pretty been were pretty disappointing in their group. Um, I'm just hoping touch food that it all works out for Ireland on, on Saturday. They were in a similar situation last year in the relegation final, and Ireland beat Bishopstown. And um, and that Bishopstown team then went down to this to the Senior A Football Championship. So I'm just hoping Ireland have enough, and they do. They've Stephen Leonard. Um, sh- they have to. They have the pedigree. They have the pedigree to to win on to win on Saturday and stay up there. And um, ho- hopefully they will, because I think they are good enough to to do something in the Premier Senior Football Championship. They're not at the stage where they can go on and do what Clan and Haven and these these challengers challengers are. But I think um, I think they have the caliber to stay up there, and they've put in the effort this year. So I'm just hoping they get the reward on Saturday. Okay. Well. We might leave it there for now. And coming up after this short break, we'll preview this week's Southern Star. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast. Number one for sport in West Cork. Welcome back to the Star Sport Podcast. And as always, at this time of the week, we're going to quickly preview what's coming up 
in this week's Southern Star Sports section. And Kieran, we've spoken about all the West Cover West Cork clubs in action this weekend. So I'm assuming there's lots and lots of insightful, in-depth previews of these games. I know I say it every week, Jack, but this one is a really good star sports section on the way on Thursday morning um, and it's well worth picking up. So 28 pages and where it's creaking under the weight of the, the West Cork sport this week. So we have two pages on each of the Premier Senior uh, Football semi-final. So that's two pages on Clan and two pages on Castlehaven. And let's just, let's say for Clan for a second, I have a full page interview with Liam O'Donovan. Um, he's the, the Clan Kilty and Cork footballer who's been cursed with, with injury the last 15 months or so. Um, Liam tore his ACL in July 2020, played his first game back against Bell and Colleague in this year's championship. So it's a really good chat with Liam O'Donovan who, um, who talks about all the setbacks he had along the way. He did ankle ligaments. He did a hamstring. He's actually playing with a hamstring tear at the moment as well. So um, it's a really good, insightful interview with, with Liam, who also reveals a chat that the clan players had um, after a league game earlier this year where they said, you know what, lads, we're sick of losing. We need to kind of buy into this. We need to show people what we can do. And clan have done that and they're, and they're getting the results Um also, chat to Owen Ryan, the clan selector. Spoken to James McCarthy, the Castlehaven manager. We have an interview with David, David, um, David McCarthy, the, the Castlehaven footballer. Um, Jerry McCarthy from Donnie's. We have a full page interview with him ahead of their county senior A semi final on Saturday. We have a full page preview of Goline against Randalls, the game we we're chatting about earlier. We have a full page preview of the Donnie's and Haven ladies preview. We've got this far without saying congrats to Kilbritton, Jamie Walls, Kilbritton, who are true to the county lower intermediate hurling championship final. They had a terrific win last weekend in their semi final. They were far too strong for Tracton. And we have a full page on Kilbritton's big win, including reaction from Jamie Wall. Um, as well as that, we have great coverage of the, the Carberry Junior A football final. That's that's Tyg McCarrick's win that we covered earlier. And the inside track, which is Michal O'Sullivan's weekly column, is on the Junior A football final. And that's well worth to read. He's looking at it from a tactical point of view and what Cara got right. So, again, superb coverage of the of the Carberry Junior A football final. We have a full page two on the Orhan footballers. What a story this is, Jack. One of my favourite stories of the last couple of weeks. Orhan won in the County Junior A football championship last weekend. It was their first win in this in this competition since 2007. So they ended that 14 year wait. They beat Bride Rovers by a point. Dramatic circumstances too. Conor Lowney with a, with a late score there. So um, full page um, on Orhan. And that and for, for our, our readers and listeners in Beira, it's well worth picking up because we have a great interview with Shane O'Sullivan, the Orhan chairman as well. Tom Lyons is a great piece this week too, Jack, about blow-ins in Clan Akilte and how much of a role they've had in, in Clan Kilty GA over the years because this current Clan Kilty team that's in the Premier Senior Football Final they have two Kerrymen in Joe Grimes and Darrow O'Shea and then Bid um, Bin Ridgeway um, is a former, I think he's a former um, rugby player from Connacht as well and he, he's there so really good piece by by Tom Lyons on that also Era Ogre in the County Senior Ladies Football Final, they're taking on Moore Abbey uh, this this weekend, uh, this Friday night at Parky Cueve, and we have an interview with Emer Skelly. We have a full page on the Carnivory from last week, where it was a brilliant, a brilliant day for West Cork schools. Skibbereen, the Hemis, and Clannacilty Community College all won. Um, and there's a load more besides that, Jack. As you can see, it's packed this week, and it, it's well worth the price. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> looking forward to sinking my teeth into all of that, especially now. With the fact that nearly all these club club games are streamed on some platform over the weekend. So what better way to spend the weekend than by picking up a copy of the Star on Thursday, reading all the previews, then listening to the Star Sport podcast, then dedicating both Saturday and Sunday to watching club games from around the county. It's just, it's heaven really, Kieran. I have to say. And if you can't make it to the shops on Thursday to pick up a copy of the Southern Star, say, for example, you're a Clonakilty expat living in Dubai and you still want to get the lowdown on your club's county semi final, just log on to southernstar.ie forward slash epaper and you can read the digital edition of the Southern Star for less than two euro per week. And it doesn't just have to be someone from Clonakilty. If you're a Randall's fan, a Goline 
stalwart. If you're an expat in America who hails from Castlehaven, log on, read this week's star for the lowdown on your club's chances in the county championship this weekend. But Kieran, let's leave it there for this week. Thanks for listening to the Star Sport Podcast, wherever you're listening from. We'll be back at the same time next week looking back on all these cracking games. If you enjoy these shows, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Slán Tommel.